What's up, everybody, and welcome to a preview of the new digital SAT straight from the College Board. Let's do it. So jumping into the math test, let's see what we got here. Based on the system of equations, what is the value of the product xy? So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to line up these two equations so that the x's are on top of the x's and the y's are as well. And to do that, I need to consolidate these y's right here. So I'm going to say 4x, and then I'm going to subtract 3y from both sides on this top equation. So then it's going to be negative 3y and negative y, which is negative 4y equals 7. And on bottom, I'm going to leave it as x plus 8y equals 4. Now I want to use elimination to get rid of the y, so I'm going to multiply the top by 2, and we're going to get 8x minus 8y equals 14. Then I'm going to combine everything like so. I'm going to add it together. Those cancel out. 8x plus x is 9x equals 4 plus 14, which is 18. Divide by 9, divide by 9, and we get x equals 2. That's nice because the whole number is probably correct. Plug it back in. So 2 plus 8y equals 4, subtract 2, subtract 2, 8y equals 2, divided by 8, divided by 8, and I get y equals 1 fourth. So they want x times y, so 2 times 1 fourth should be 1 half, which is c. So I just want to double check with 2 and 1 fourth up here as well. So if I plug in 2, I get 8 minus 1 fourth equals 3 times 1 fourth, which is 3 fourths plus 7, and that checks out. So we are good to go. C, boom, done. A system of three equations and the graphs in the xy plane are shown. How many solutions does the system have? So a system of three, the solution will be where all three intersect. So like here, I see two intersecting, so that's no good. Two intersecting the parabola and the circle. But here I see all three. So this is one solution where we have the line, the parabola, and the circle. And here I see another point, the parabola, the line, and the circle. So we're going to have two solutions, and that's it. We are done. A survey was conducted among a randomly chosen sample of U.S. citizens about U.S. voter participation in the November 2012 presidential election. The table displays a summary of the survey results. We got 18 to 34, voted, did not vote, no response, total, got it. That's all based by age. Okay, that makes sense. According to the table, for which age group did the greatest percentage of people report that they had voted? According to which age group the greatest, greatest percentage that they had voted? So we're looking at this out of the total. Uh, I could use a calculator, I believe, for everything on this test. Right? Yeah, I can. So... Maybe I'll use the calculator just to, just for fun. So basic, because I could probably guesstimate. Actually, let's just guess and then like guesstimate, and then we will use the calculator for verification. So this is around, I'll say like 48% because it's like 30,000 out of 63. I'm just estimating. So 48%. It's a 47 out of 74. Let's see. If I said 48, that'd be 16, then 64. So it'd be 75. Oof, it's a little harder. Or it's more like, 50 out of 75, which is like two thirds. So let's say um, 63%, I'm gonna estimate. And then this one is 43 out of 60. So 45 out of 60 is like 75. So it's a little bit less, let's say 72%. And then this is, let's say 12, five out of 17, five, which is, da, 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 da. let me see, 12.5 out of 17.5. That's like, if I do 2.5, so that's like five, uh, what's it, four, five 2.5s over six, seven 2.5. So five sevenths is about, should use a calculator for this, this is crazy. Uh, let's just do it anyways. We're already this far, seven, 49, 10, one. So it's like 71%. Oof. So we're definitely going to want to check because I think it's down to one of these two. So we'll see how good my estimates were this calculator here. Will it let me use it? Hold on. Uh-oh, I just erased all my work. Oh, there is the calculator. Darn it. Wait, let me see if I can bring all that back. Okay. And so we'll say, what is it? Oh, cool. You can like move it around. This is awesome. So we'll say 30,000. I'm just going to estimate out of 63,000. And there, I would look at that. It was pretty close. 48, 47, you know, 0.476. So 48% rounds up. 
And then this one is 4, 7,000 divided by 7, 4, 300. And that's, man, legend, 63%. Okay. And then this one is 43,000 divided by 60,000, let's just say. Which is 72%. That's pretty much what I rounded up to. And then last one is 12. Four, five, nine. Ah, I should, you know what? I should be more exact because these are so close. Yeah, but like, okay, so that's only 70%, 70%. Let's change that to 70%. And then this one would be... I don't want to try one more time. 43075 divided by 5. Yeah, 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 we're good. So 72. So it is 55 to 74-year-olds. Boom. I guess we can just close this and delete that next. Okay, of the 18 to 24 year olds reported voting, 500, okay. Of, of, who, of those that voted, 500 were selected at random to do a follow-up survey where they were asked which candidate they voted for. There were 287 in this follow-up survey sample who said they voted for candidate A. And 213 voted for somebody else. I'm going to say else. Oops, else. And using the data from both the follow-up survey and the initial survey, which of the following is most likely to be an accurate statement? Okay. First, I'd like to think about what I, what would make sense here. So I think if we did a, what is it? It's a random survey, right? So we can say, say that <clears throat> the majority of people from 18 to 34, I think, probably voted for candidate A is what I would say. About a hundred and twenty. Oh, then they calculated it and understood. Okay. So, okay. So let's do the calculation. So this is in thousands. So that means 30 million voted. So then we would say, using our calculator, so we would say 287 out of 500 times. What is it? 30, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, because it's in thousands. So it's, so it's 17 million. So we're looking, I think I saw 17 million somewhere here. It would say about 17 million people, 18 to 34, would report voting. See, I don't like this would. It's such a definitive language. They say, like, would likely, you know, but hey, they said would likely be an accurate statement. So I guess we're okay. All right, cool. That's that. And we're going to clear that. And let's move on. I think that's it. Oh, no, 13. We got more questions here. 13 to 14, solve the problem and enter your answer in the box as described below. Whoa, this is cool. This is, gonna, this is how the free response, I guess, is going to be very interesting. This is super cool. I'm literally seeing this for the first time live with you guys, so this is fun. Okay, one half. Let's see here. So we got one half X. Oops. One half X plus one third y equals four. What does value of three x plus two y? So in this case, we're only given one equation with two variables. Don't fall in the trap of trying to solve for x and y individually. Instead, just try and get this expression. So if I multiply, I believe, the, the least common multiple of two and three, which is six. If I multiply the entire equation by six, look what happens. One half of six is three x. Wow, lo and behold, three x. And they set this up for you on purpose so you get this nice answer. Six times one third is two y equals six times four is 24. So the answer is 24, like this, I guess. And then do I just hit enter? Let me see. I think that's it, and I just go next. Okay, uh, we've got this. What is one possible value of 90 minus three? Hmm. Okay, again, there's gonna be a beautiful shortcut here. Uh, I can find values of t and all that, but look at this. If I just multiply everything by negative 3, negative 3, negative 3, I'm going to get 9t minus 3 in the middle. So in the middle, I got 9t minus 3. But then you got to remember the inequality rule. When you multiply the size of an inequality by negative, you flip those inequalities. Flip them like so. So negative 3 times negative 7 fourths is positive 21 over 4. And then over here, it would be positive 27 over 5. So it's in between. So we need a possible value. So let's see, 27 over five is like 
5.4, right? And 21 over 4 is 5.25. So it's got to be greater than 5.25 and less than 5.4. So I guess I can say 5.3. That should be acceptable. I'm assuming it accepts anything in between that range. So we'll just go 5.3. And see, I, I, you can type it on the keypad or I just typed it in just like that on the keyboard. Okay, next. And then the essay. Here we go. Okay, now we're going to check over all the answers. So everything that was reading, which I believe is all of these questions, and then there was this essay. I skipped all that. So, oh, oh, this is it. I think I hit, do I hit end test? Oh, here we go. So I don't think I know. Okay, I don't think I know if I got it right now. Now I'll see. Here we go. Oh, an unanswered question. And then, oh, now I have to submit. Got it, got it, got it. Okay, now we submit. Now we see. And then you may review the results below. Now I see the results. Hold on. Did you log out of the test in the question? Okay. Well, that was strange. I don't know. I wasn't able to see the actual results. I don't know if it was something was glitching or what was going on, but hey, it is what it is. Uh, at least we got to go through and preview the math on this test, which was pretty cool and pretty fun. So that's it. That's the digital preview of the new digital SAT from the College Board. So I hope that gives you some insight. You can see that there's obviously a lot of similarities and overlaps. I mean, it pretty much felt like the current math on the SAT. The nice thing is, for those of you who do like using a calculator, there's one available, and it's Desmos, which is the best calculator in my opinion. It's so easy to use and so great, so hopefully you saw me use it in some of those cases, and uh, yeah, that's it. So I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, click that like button. If you want to see more from the Scalar Learning channel, make sure to click subscribe. Thank you guys so much for joining, and I'll see you in the next video. Take it easy.